We had a bear channel yesterday. I always think of a bear channel as a bull flag because 75% of the time you get a break above the channel. We were opening in the middle of yesterday's range. These prices are all wrong. Trade Station and the Merck have not yet fixed the rollover prices. So all the prices on um, the daily chart, everything is wrong. And they might be waiting for June to come off the board next week to fix the prices. So, for example, this high right here, the all-time high, is 3371.90. And it cannot be 90 because every tick is 25 cents. 90 is not a multiple of 25. So every one of these prices is wrong. And I'll fix them once they uh, adjust it. These lines are wrong. They're based on the June contract, which is now um, not the front, no longer the front month. So, but they're approximate. I'll leave them there for the time being. This is the Globex chart. We're near the Globex high. Well, I'm having a hard time. The Globex chart, we have a bull channel. Yesterday, bear channel, bull flag, expect a bull breakout. Bear channel, a bull channel, bear flag, expect a bear breakout. So um, we'll probably get some kind of a sell-off early on. It's possible that we just keep going up and up and up and totally erase yesterday. But I suspect more likely today is going to be an inside day. Yesterday's low is probably too far down for the E-mini to get there today, and yesterday's high is probably too far up. On the daily chart, we're right around the 20-day moving average. There was support, support, resistance, support, 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 and possibly support. We still have an island top here, <clears throat> and we're still in a small pullback bull trend. Even though we have serves you, I want to say what I've said several times, it's a three-day pullback. And every pullback since May and March has been three days or less. So the bulls are hoping that this is just a pullback to the 200-day moving average, which is right there. Let me change the color of that. Both the 250-day moving averages are relatively close. We've been sideways now for a month, big up, big down. Um, the bears really needed today to be a second consecutive bear day if we were going to collapse down. I did not think we were going to collapse. Um, I thought that this was a bull leg in a trading range. This is a bear leg in a trading range. This was a buy climax. And very often, if you get a reversal down from the buy climax, you have to go sideways for several days. The bulls will try to get a micro bubble bottom, and then they'll want the bull trend to resume. And the bears will try to get a lower high and a second leg down. With yesterday as big as it was, I think we'll probably get a second leg down. So I think it'll probably be like this, a small version of this. Big sell-off here, four days, here just one, a couple days, and a bounce for several days, and then a second leg down. I do not think we'll do that. But I still think the bears have a decent chance of coming down here. We're back above a 10% correction, so we're no longer in correction territory. We're back above the 20-day moving average, and we're holding support of the 200-day moving average. So as bearish as yesterday was, it's not all that bearish. If we were to gap up on Monday, we would have a two-day island bottom. When the markets in a trading range, island tops and bottoms are fairly common, <clears throat> and they're typically minor reverses. This one has the potential to be a major one because it's coming in a buy climax, and we have a double top with the February high. But well, more likely, it's not going to lead to a bear trend. It might lead to a trading range, make um, sell off down to here, but it's, I doubt that it's going down there. Weekly chart. We have an upside down week last week. Today's Friday, so weekly support and resistance are important. The bears would like the week to close below last week's low, but with the size of today's gap up, well, I think that probably uh, will not happen. First part of the day, a bear body, um, but a big tail below. So um, traders are not eager to sell below one. And for the bulls, they're viewing this as a bull trend, 
and one as a pullback. We have a full up down to the close of one, but traders do not want to buy above the big bear bar this far above the average price. Most of the time, when you get a big gap up, you're going to get some kind of an early trading range. Just like yesterday, we had a big gap down, and we were sideways for over an hour. Usually, the market has to get closer to the moving average, and then it decides whether to go up or down. A big gap down, if you're going to get a trend, is more likely to be down, but not much more likely. And today, we have a big gap up. If we're going to get a trend, it's more likely to be up. We have the 60-minute moving average magnet above. We have yesterday's high magnet above. We're not that far from um, yesterday's high. What do you do right here? You wait. You don't want to be buying above a big bear bar because you're paying far above the average price, and you don't want to buy a big bear bar that's not far above average bullishness. And as for selling below one, we have a tail. That means it went down, and there were buyers. So not good to sell below one. Probably a trading range open, probably um, more limit order trading. Sellers above, buyers below. According to this, the low of last week is 3016.40. And remember, it cannot be 0.40 because every tick is 25 cents. So it has to be a multiple of 25. And that's why I have approximate, these are all approximate prices because they have not yet back adjusted the daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Bulls hoping that this is a pullback and that two is a high one. So this is a bull trend. The gap up is a bull trend. And they're hoping one is a pullback and that two is a high one um, buy signal bar. But after a bear bar one, I think it's not worth buying above two. What happens if we get a bear inside bar closing on its low? If it closes on its low or near its low, it would be a credible sell, but you have to assume we're probably in a trading range open. Bar one is a trading range bar. It went down, it went up, and closed in the middle. In general, whenever you have big down, big up, you get big confusion. The bears are concerned that it's not as bearish as they want. The bulls are concerned that we sold up big yesterday, we might sell up again today. So you get confusion, and if traders are confused, they typically are not willing to hold on to trades. They tend to take quick profits. And also, they don't want to buy too high, like far above the moving average. They want to buy low, and they don't want to sell um, too low, and therefore they want to sell rallies. So you get traders looking to buy low, sell high, and take quick profits, and the result is typically a trading range. 60-minute chart, getting near yesterday's high and the 60-minute moving average. Bulls are hoping that this is just a sell vacuum test of support. Support is the 200-day moving average right there. Can you sell the one high? Um, it's probably okay, but where's your stop, right? Is your stop above yesterday's high? You know, you know, is your stop up here? You know, the bars are big, so the risk is big. And um, not trading with limit orders, I'd wait for the market to go sideways for a few bars before thinking about trading with limit orders. And as I said, I'm not willing to buy this far above the average price when we have um, a bear body on once. So right now I'm trapped out. Sometimes you'll get a very big bear bar in a bull trend, and it's just a um, bull a bear trap like this, like that. And sometimes in a bear trend, you'll get a very big bull bar, and it's a bull trap like this. So a big bull bar and the bear trend continue down. And big bear bar, maybe the bull trend continues up. We don't know. As I said, it's a three-day pullback, and we've had a couple other three-day pullbacks, but we have not had a four-day pullback. So it will be interesting to see over the next few days if we get a low below today's low. That would be a four-day pullback, and that would be the first one in the three-month um, bull trend. A pair of consecutive pull bars with decent-sized bodies. So three closes up here. That would be always in long, and it would be um, reasonably good for the bulls, right? Uh, so that increases the chances that we can get a bull trend from the open. The problem the bulls have is, you know, look how far down the moving average is. 
a lot of the bulls do not want to buy that far above the moving average. Sometimes you'll get bull trends from the open where you have a bear bar and a couple bull bars, but it would be very rare for the market to begin going up this far above the moving average. So this is probably not going to go very far. Here are some examples of days where we had a gap up in a bull trend. So this, we gapped up far above the moving average and then it became a huge bull trend. That is rare. Again, gapping up far above the moving average. Today, we're gapping up far above the moving average, but that's rare. Um, you know, more often, yeah, you have to get closer to the moving average before you can get, um, a big bull trend. This is closer to the average than we are today. You know, here, the moving average is right there. You know, if I carried the moving average down, it would be right around that low. So if you're going to get a bull trend from the open, you know, you'll get a couple days a year that are like this, a couple days a year like that, and we'll get a couple days a year like yesterday on the bear side. You know, they're rare days. You can see hesitation to get that tail up there. Traders don't want to pay that much above the average price. Can you sell below three and gap up in a buy climax? If it becomes a big bear bar closing on its low, it would be a credible sell. We still have a minute left, so it's possible. Do I think it's likely? No. I think, like I said, most of the time you're going to get some kind of a trading range open when you have a big gap. Bulls trying to get consecutive bull bars closing near or on their highs, but we're spending a lot of time below the high. So um, this is probably not going to close on the high. It's probably going to disappoint the bulls. Bulls trying, but even if it does close on the high, I'm not. I'm not going to buy up there. It's just too far. You don't even see the average price. We're so far above it. Okay, there. It closed in the upper third, but not on the high. So to me, it's not, it, we're not going to go up much from here. So um, <clears throat> if I were a computer, uh, you know, I possibly would be selling here and selling more higher. As an individual trader, I don't want to. You know, if you're a computer, um, you can sell, let's say you're a computer with a hundred million dollar uh, account. You know, you can uh, sell one e-mini, sell another one two points higher, another one two more points higher and keep doing it up 30, 40 points. And you'll have a total of 30 or 40 contracts. And if you have a hundred million dollar account, that's, that's nothing at all. But as an individual trader, I don't want to be thinking about scaling in, you know, 30 times. You know, I don't want to be scaling in four times, three times. I don't want to be scaling in. But if I were, you know, if I were trading it, you know, I would trade it like a computer and just scale in as it goes up, betting that it's not going to become a bull trend. As an individual trader, best price to wait. Can you sell below three? A buy climax. Now, if you're selling, especially after a big gap up, it's better to sell below a bear bar. Bears are hoping that it's going to be a, a gap up and a buy climax. And then they're hoping that we'll put in an early high of the day. By a buy climax, I mean it just goes up and then down. So up and down. If it goes up twice, then you get a low two, which is also a common pattern. But if it reverses down the very first time, I just call it a buy climax. If, it, um, if there are two legs up and reverse, then I call it a low two. So strong rally, two reversals down, one, two. So you could call this a buy climax sell, but a bull body and a whole bunch of bull bodies. So I would not take the first reversal down. However, if we get a second reversal down with a bear bar closing near its low, it's a credible sell. Big gap up, low one here and then low two there. Big gap up, immediate reversal, no low two. So. Um, it's just a buy climax and a reversal. Buy climax, reversal. 
Here we go. This is really a low two, low one, low two. So it's a biclimax and a second biclimax. Again, low two, low one, low two. But I also have it here in the biclimax category because it's a biclimax and you have a second signal. But it is a low two, low one, low two. Biclimax, low one, but a bull bar, not a great sell. A lower high, but after a pretty good bull bar. And then you got a trading range, double bottom, double top. And double top, not a good sell signal bar, not a good sell signal bar. Then we start to get bear bars closing on their lows, traders will start selling there. So what happened to those bulls that bought above two? Most of those bulls were computers just looking for a trade up. You know, most individual traders know that it was, it would be dumb to buy above two, far above the moving average after a bear bar one. Now we have consecutive bull bars. We have a big guy up where we was in one. Can you buy the three low? Um, look at the look at the average price. Um, it's still way down here, so um, I would not be too quick to buy. Huge bear bar. What about selling below its low? There are probably buyers below three, so we're probably going up to the three low. So it's a bad sell signal bar. And even though we're far above the average price and it's a buy climax, it's a bad sell signal bar. So chances are there'll be buyers below three. And therefore, I don't want to sell the close of four or below four because we're probably going up to that three low. Not necessarily on bar five, but probably um, before we go down very far. Can you sell below four and put a stop above three and um, just Hope that we fall for a measured move. I'm not going to do it. The math is probably okay, but you're risking 15 points early in the day. And if you get, sometimes what happens is you get really big bars, really big moves early in the day, and the stops are far away. And you take a trade, and you get stopped out. And here you lose 15 points. And then all of a sudden, the bars start to get small, and the market starts to go sideways. And you think, darn, you know, all I can make is one or two point scalps for the rest of the day. I'll never make back my 15 point loss from the first hour. So uh, that's another reason to be pretty selective if you're going to be taking trades in the first hour that require very wide stops. We know today is probably going to spend a lot of time sideways, right? Um, because Big down, big up creates big confusion, and it usually results in the market going sideways. So today is probably going to be sideways. We have a moving average there. We have a moving average here. So we're sandwiched between two moving averages and in the middle of yesterday's range, and we have big down, big up. So um, you have to assume we'll be sideways for a lot of bars today. So um, losing 15 points in the first hour. I think it's 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 a bad thing to do. Now for the bulls, they have a high one, a gap up is a bull trend. We have more bull trend here and a pullback to a high one. But four is a bare surprise bar, so we're probably going to get a second leg sideways to down. And the reason five is rallying is because traders expect the market to get above the three low. Right? It was reasonable for bulls to buy the three low and buy more, you know, two points, five points, ten points lower expecting that it'll come back above the three low before it goes down very far. And so you got buy the low bulls three, and they buy more lower, you know, five points, ten points lower. Um, and they might buy the close of four, trying to get it back above the three low. They wanted to get one tick above the three low where they can take profits on their first entry and then get a profit on their – they get, get up break even on their first buy at that three low and a profit on this buy. It's important, I think, to be patient on the open. You know, everybody is eager to trade, but you know, the goal has to be to make money. And if it's difficult to structure a profitable trade for any reason, bad signal bars, bars too big, risk too big, um, things are unclear, um, limit order market. So it's better to trade with limit orders than stop orders. You know, if there are things going on that make it difficult to structure trades, then it's better just to wait. Consecutive 
bear bars on the open, one with a big body closing on a small four. So we're probably always in short, but it's the training range open. And um, that makes the math not all that good for selling at the low. So the bulls double bottom one. Training range opens often have both double tops and double bottoms. Now yesterday was an example. We had a higher low double bottom and we had a higher high double top. We had three bull bars yet that was the top. We were in a triangle, a bear breakout and a pullback and then we got a couple bear bars. So the bulls Double bottom six, they view this as a high one, so a bull trend and a pullback. Um, do I still think we'll get above the three low? Um, probably. Is it a possible low of the day? Um, it's possible, but of the first five bars, three are bear bars with decent sized bodies, and we're far above the average price, so um, I'm not going to be buying above six. I don't want to pay above average for bars that are not above average bullishness. Can you sell the six high betting on a failed rally, betting on a bull trap? I would not sell above a, bear, a bull bar in the bottom half of what is probably a trading range open. So the math right here is not very good. I think we're always in short. We triggered the short by going below five, but it's probably going to be a trading range open. And typically by the market, time the market is clearly short, it's going to reverse up. And by the time it's clearly bullish, like bar three, it's going to reverse down. Trading ranges, you bet on reversals, you don't bet on breakouts. And at some point you get a breakout. But right now, better to wait for more information. We should get up to the three low because it was reasonable for limit order bulls to buy the three low and buy more lower. Some buy the three low and then they wait for a bull bar six and buy more above six. So they buy there, they buy more here, and that's their average price. And if they're very disappointed by four or five, they'll get out average. So they'll get out at that midpoint. So sometimes it will not get to the three low. It'll just get to the average price, the midpoint between the two logical buys, the three low and the six high. Okay, just did. Now it's up near the three low. What happens if it hits the three low, does not go above. <clears throat> then the bulls who bought the three low will uh, be quick to get out. Sometimes when you get a huge day like yesterday, and then the next day, today, opens in the middle of the range. You get a small trading range today that just stays right around the middle of the range. Here's an example, big bear day, and then a doji bar, a big bull day, and then a doji bar right around the middle of the range. Here's an example, big bear day, and then a doji bar, a big bull day, and then a doji bar. Back above the three low, so limit order bulls made money. Bulls are hoping double bottom one six, and that six is the low of the day. They're hoping four or five is just a bear trap. Remember, trading range opens, assuming this is going to be a trading range open, you typically get both the double top and the double bottom. We have the double bottom, and bears will try to get a double top. When you have a big gap up, most of the time you get some kind of a trading range and the bulls will try to get a double bottom or a wedge bottom near the moving average. This is not near the moving average. So um, we probably have to get closer to the average price before we can go a lot higher. Big gap up, bulls want to buy, but they want to buy closer to the average price. Here we dipped below the moving average. Here we got close to it. So a double bottom or a wedge bottom near the bull, near the average price. They want to rally. And the bears are looking to sell. They want either a double top 
or a wedge rally, and they'll sell hoping to get a swing down. So you can see what happened at the three low, a lot of sellers. Who are the sellers? Well, some of the sellers were bulls who bought the three low and bought more lower. Others were bears knowing bulls would take profits there, expecting a trading range open. So some bears had limit orders to sell the three low and looking for a two point, four point, five point scalp. So if you're a bull hoping this is the low of the day, you're concerned six had a tail on top, seven has a tail on top, and there were two big bear bars. Bears were hoping that this is a lower high and that we've begun a bear channel. Can you sell below seven, sell below eight, or not sell below seven? We have consecutive bull bars, and it's at the bottom of the developing trading range. If eight is a bear inside bar closing on its low, um, you could argue a lower high double top or a low two, a second failed breakout above yesterday's bear channel. But the bears would need a reasonably good sell signal bar eight to attract sellers. Trading range open, bears want to sell, but they don't want to be selling near the bottom. They want to sell a reversal down near the top. Bulls want to buy, and this is a reversal up near the bottom but it's also far above the average price, and therefore it's probably a minor reversal, a leg in our trading range, and not the start of the bull trend. What happens if eight closes on its low? Can you sell that? A lower high, it's still pretty low in the range we're selling, and it's after two um, bull bars, so um, <coughs> that makes it less good. 15 minute Globex chart, we went above the Globex high, and now we have an inside bar and a second inside bar. So an II pattern, usually it's a triangle on a smaller time frame chart. The bulls hope it's a bull flag and that we go higher. The bears hope that it's a micro double top and that we reverse down wedge one or one, two, three, top of a bull channel. Breakout mode. Now, is it a triangle yet? Not necessarily on the five minute chart, but we have one low, a second low, and the tail on the bottom of eight is a third low. So on some smaller time frame chart, it's probably a triangle, it's a two minute chart. So we have a low, a higher low, and a higher low. There's a one minute chart. We have a low, a higher low, and a higher low. And we have a lower high, and another lower high. So it's a triangle. On the 15 minute chart, we have an II and that's almost always going to be a triangle on some smaller time frame chart. And you can see on the one minute chart, it's a triangle. So breakout mode does not look like a triangle on the five minute chart. But the five minute chart is also breakout mode. We have a double bottom and a double top. Now, what about selling below eight if it closes near its low? Um, like that. It's a better sell than below three, but, um, it's selling fairly low in the range, and that always makes me suspicious whenever there's a trading range open and a decent sell signal, but it's in the bottom half of the range. I think the probability is less, so I usually do not take that sell. I wait to see if we get two or three bear bars and then think about selling. So this is a possible high of the day. So I'm, you know, I did not take it, but I'm not. It's not it's not dumb to take it. It's okay to take it. I'm just going to wait to see if we get follow through. I don't like selling too low in a trading range open. You can see the hesitation. That means a lot of traders are looking at it, you know, thinking that you know, maybe it's a short. You have some sell the close bears five, disappointed six seven, and they sold higher, expecting it to come down to the five low, and that's where we are now. So a lot of those bears will buy back their shorts. We don't know if a lot will buy back their shorts or if they will hold and take a chance that eight is the start of a bear trend. We'll know when we see nine. If it has a fairly big tail below, that means that a lot of the bears who sold the five close decided to just get out break even now that it's back to the five close. It's back to the five close potential for the bears to give up here. So if the bears who did 
sell the five clothes, decide not to buy back their shorts, other bears will be encouraged and um, it could lead to a quick breakout. Breaking out in the low of the day, good for the bears. Will it close on its low? Will it close below one? Will 10 also be a bear bar when we get follow through selling? Or will the bulls get a reversal, a high two, six? Good pair of bars for the bears. Will bulls buy above 10, high two, six? Um, it's a big enough bear surprise so that the bulls would be in a very good bull bar, 10 to attract buyers. So right now it's more likely that we'll go at least a little bit lower. Possibly a measure move down based upon the height of the range. Maybe a measure move down based upon a lower high devil top. Bears want to get another bear bar that would increase the chances of this going lower. And bulls want to get as good a bull bar as they can get, hoping that it'll be a high two six. Right now it's more bearish than bullish. So more traders selling than buying. For the bulls to buy above six, you can call it a high two, high one, high two. You can call it a wedge. We went down on two, up on two, and then down on six, up on six, and then down on nine. The bulls are trying to get back to the open of the hour. We're getting late in the hour. And right now, the 60-minute bar is a bear bar, closing near its low. And the bulls, they don't want it to be a bear bar, but they certainly don't want it to be a big bear bar. So they'll try to get back to the open of the hour over the next three bars. Whenever you see bad follow-through, you're always going to be thinking trading range. A pair of big bull bars and then reverse down, so bad follow-through. A pair of big bear bars, four or five, reversal up. A big bear breakout, nine, and um, bouncing. So this is um, trading range behavior, and it lowers the probability that we're going to get a um, a big trend out of this. Some limit order bulls bought the six low, some bought the one low. The ones who bought the one low and bought more, two points lower, four points lower, have made money. So limit order bulls made money. And the ones who bought the six low, it has to get back above that six low for them to make money, which it just did. And so here we have bulls buying in a bear trend and making money. So there's something wrong with the bear trend. And while it is a bear trend, we have lower high, we have a lower low, um, it's probably not going to be a big bear trend day. If it's easy for bulls to make money in a bear trend, then the bear trend is usually not very strong. Fighting over the appearance of the bar. Remember, nine breakout, no low of the day. The bears wanted Consecutive big bear bars closing on their lows. Instead, they got a bull body 10. So, um, weak follow through selling and it creates hesitation. Traders are wondering, is this a bear leg and a developing trading range? Is it a high two bottom? Six and 10. And for the bulls, it's a bull bar, a high two six, but, and we have a magnet, the open of uh, bar one. Um, and we're getting late in the hour. The bulls would like to get all the way back up there. That's probably too far to reach in 10 minutes, especially with a bad buy signal bar 10. But if you're a bear, let's say you sold the 10, let's say you sold the nine close or below nine, um, you're disappointed at 10. And a lot of those bears are buying back their shorts 11, creating this rally. Trading range behavior. You get strong, Bars up and down, and they reverse instead of having good follow-through. You know, bar three, reverse. Bar four, five, reverse. Bar seven, reverse. Bar nine, reverse. And traders are taking quick profits. So it's a good example. You don't want to be selling low. You don't want to be buying high because it's a, has a lot of, we have a lot of trading range trading, and it's the exact opposite. It's easier so far for limit order traders to make money. They see a big bull bar three, a big bull bar four, they sell the close. Big bear bar, excuse me, a big bull bar two, big bull bar three, they sell the close, sell the close. Big bear bar four, big bear bar five, they buy the close. Bull bar seven, they sell. 
bear bar eight, bear bar nine, they uh, buy. So limit order market. Above bars, more sellers than buyers. Right? Stop order market, it goes above the high of the bar. You buy, expecting it to go higher. A limit order market, it goes above the high of a bar. You expect it not to go higher, so you sell. And the opposite, below bars. Stop order market, you sell below a bar, and you expect the market to go lower, begin a trend. A limit order market, the market you sell below a bar, and you expect that there'll be more um, buyers than sellers. So um, limit order market, traders buying below things, below eight, below six, below one, making money, and traders selling above things, above two, above six, um, making money. Still a bear channel. We still have a lower high seven and a lower low ten. But this is all about the 60-minute chart. You know, can the bulls erase a lot of the bearishness of that first hour? You know, can they put a big tail on the bottom of the bar and make it less bearish? Can you buy above 11? It's fairly low in the day's range. I would not. It's probably too high. Also, you got to be thinking it's a limit order market. And if you're buying, you want to be buying low, probably with limit orders, low things, low one, low six, and bear closes like nine, not with stop orders above. You can see the moving average going up quickly. It's a 20 bar average, so it's based on 20 bars. And now we have 11 bars up here, so. <clears throat> Of this average, 11 of the 20 bars are up here, so the market's getting pulled up here because the majority of the bars are up here. Bears trying to get, when they have a low one below 11, they're trying to get a bear bar 12 or another low one. They're hoping for a bear channel to continue. Bears low one 12. Looks like we're going to close near the low of the hour. Well, we're getting a lot of bull bars. Two bull bars here, two bull bars here, two bull bars here. Well, low one eleven on a bull bar. Probably buyers below eleven, buyers below ten. Possible wedge. Remember, I said when you have a big gap up, the bulls want to buy near the moving average, and they look for some kind of a wedge or for a double bottom. Here, you can call it a lower low double bottom. Bulls, I would call it a wedge, but they need to get a reversal up. So three legs down, one, two, and possibly three. So the bears is the bear channel, and they're hoping that we just keep going lower. It's important that 11 did not get above the eight low. So that means the bulls have bought the eight low who are unable to make money. So um, that's good for the bears. Bar 12, the end of the hour, and you can see for the bears, they have a bear bar closing on its low, so that's good for the bears. The bulls who are trying to get the hour to close back in the middle are giving up. 12 is a give up bar. How far down can we go? Well, we're right near the moving average. You can see early bear channel. Bears trying to get a breakout and a measure move down. Bulls hoping for a wedge. They'll need a bull bar on 13 or 14, and bears are trying to get a measure move down. They're trying to get 12 to close far below 10, and then they're hoping that we get a measure move down. I think that's probably unrealistic. Takes us down here. This kind of a bar, bear surprise, people are selling the market. And what happens if we get a, a bull bar? 13, wedge 6, 10. You would need a pretty good bull bar to make traders willing to buy book 13. Bears want follow through, right? They did not get follow through 9, 10, but they're hoping to get follow through here. Remember, I said that the bulls would want a double bottom or a wedge bottom near the moving average. And wedge bottoms often do not look like wedges, especially on the open. You have to be 
very flexible about your um, opinion as to what a wedge is. Wedge, very tight bare channel. Four bear bars, a lot of the bulls away for a second buy there. Others away for a bull bar closing the airs high. We went a little bit below the moving average with a lot of strong selling, yet it was just a sell vacuum test of support. Wedge does not look like a wedge. It became a bigger wedge. <clears throat> so for the bulls, it's important. They need a bull bar closing on its high. <clears throat> Bears hoping to get follow through. They did not get a good follow through after four or five, after nine. At a minimum, if we have a bear bar on 13, bears get out above 13. And if it's a pretty good bull bar, swing bulls will buy. <clears throat> bears are hoping for the measure to move down. Well, we're at support. We're right near a 10% correction. Again, these prices are not accurate because of the rollover. So this could be 10 points away from what it real, where it really is. So I would not pay much attention to these lines. I'm leaving them in there. So that once the CME updates its continuation charts, I will update these lines. For well, the bulls to buy 13, they'd like it to close on or near its high. A lot of times you'll get a very strong sell-off in a tight channel, yet you get a reversal up for the low of the day. You know, like that. Here we've got a second buy. Does not look like a wedge, but we have three lows. Wedge near the moving average. Three reversals up, one, two, and three near the moving average. Bunch of tails, a micro wedge. Does not look like a wedge at all. <clears throat> Does not look like a wedge at all. Got trading range open. So I would think of this as more a trading range open than a wedge. A failed breakout below a double bottom is a wedge because you have three lows, one, two for the double bottom, and then three. A bigger wedge. Tried to get a small one here. We got one more leg down. Let's say 13 closes on its high. Credible low of the day. But is it a scalp or a swing? It's a swing because he's buying in the tight bear channel and therefore the probabilities are not as high as you want. If you want higher probability, you wait to see if we go sideways and get a micro level bottom or you wait for one or two bull bars. <clears throat> Bears trying to get follow through. They're hoping that the gap below 10 stays open. They want 13 to be a breakout test and for the market to go down for a measure move. Bears, they'll stay short. Until we get a bull bar, maybe 13, and they'll get out above the bull bar 13. They don't have to they can keep a stop above 11, but it's reasonable to get out above 13 because of a possible wedge. Can you buy at the moving average? Nope. So you're either selling or you're waiting, waiting for a bull bar to buy, to buy. I did sell early in 12, but I'm flat now. I'm not selling at the moving average, even though we have a potential measuring gap here. I thought it was important that 11 did not go above the 8 low. So we had limit order bulls 8, unable to get out on 11, and so they started to sell during 12. Remember yesterday we had waves of selling around this price level. So, you know, we sold off, we sold off, we sold off, you know, four or five bars, three or four bars, you know, relentless, persistent selling. That's very bearish. Instead of just selling, get off for a bar or two, we sold off for three or four bars, four bars. Climactic. Can you buy the close of 14? No, I would not be buying yet. Can we go below yesterday's low? Probably not. 
the gap up is too big. If the bears are that strong that they can create that kind of sustained selling, they would not have been, well, they would not have allowed the market to open way up here in the middle of yesterday's range. So today's probably going to remain an inside day, not go above yesterday's high, not go below yesterday's low. Are the bills, are the bulls still looking for a wedge? No, they needed the wedge here on, on 11, on 13. We have another big bear breakout. Probably will go at least a little bit lower. Bulls hoping it's a parabolic wedge, sell climax, one, two, three. Well, I'm not planning to buy above 15. I'll wait for a micro double bottom. Above 15, I'll wait for a micro double bottom. Whenever you have that kind of extreme selling, usually you get a lot of stocks going down. And you can see ticks hit minus 1,000. That's usually not the final low in price. So this is probably not going to be the final low. For well, the bulls, the parabolic wedge, three strong legs down, one pause, two pause, three. Bears, I get out of shorts above any bull bar, 15, for example. And uh, for bulls to buy, uh, I'm not sure that it's worth it. Um, buying above 15, probably better to wait for a micro double bottom or wait to see if we get a couple bull bars before buying. I like parabolic wedges. I like parabolic wedges on the open. But um, when you have a lot of bear bars in a tight bear channel, that lowers the probability that the first reverse left will get very far. And when you have a very big buy signal bar, 15, the stop is far below. So at a minimum, you get out of shorts above a bull bar, 15. But to, to get long, um, I think the math is not all that good. Let's say you buy about 15, you put a stop below 14, uh, you probably would. Um, but what happens if it gets below 14, gets below 15, there probably will be buyers below. This sell-off is different from yesterday. Do you see the difference? Bear bar, bear, 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 right? Bear, 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 bear. So in terms of points, it's comparable to yesterday. But in terms of the appearance, it's not. We're not getting sustained selling. We're getting selling pause, selling pause, selling pause. And that kind of hesitation usually happens if the sell-off is going to be part of a trading range. And it's less likely to last all day. So I'd get out of shorts about 15. And for the bulls, it's really difficult because um, the probability is not very good buying about 15. Now, for the bears, it's a low one, 15, but it's a bull bar, and we're right above the measured move target. So I I'm, I'm, I'm bet there are buyers not far below 15, so I would not sell the low one below 15. Also low of the day, I would get out of shorts for sure, um, but as far as getting long, parabolic wedge, moving average. If it's going to be the start of a swing up, We'll get um, more evidence of it. So I think better to wait for another bar or two before buying. Wait for another bar or two before buying. Do I still think today's going to be an inside day? Yes. Okay, so I don't think we're going a lot lower. Best case for the bulls would be go up for a few bars and then go below 14 and reverse up a second time. For a lower low double bottom, lower low major trend reversal, a second reversal up from the parabolic wedge. And for the bears, um, I think the bad follow through in the parabolic wedge will make a lot of bears wait for a couple legs up before thinking about selling again. Low one, but possible parabolic wedge and a series of sell climaxes. <clears throat> with pauses after every big uh, bear bar. So that usually is, leads to an exhaustion and a reversal. <clears throat> so I did not sell below the 16 doji bar. 
but um, I am willing to buy if we get a good bull bar 17. Remember, the market often tries to reverse around bar 18. Remember, also I said that we had a tick extreme, almost minus 1,000. That's usually not the final low in price. So you have to assume whatever rally we get, we're going to get a new low in price. And it usually comes with fewer ticks, less negative ticks. Ticks, there are about 3,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, and every stock gets a value of one. So if GE goes up on the last trade, you get a plus one tick. If uh, AT&T goes down, you get a minus one tick, and you add up all the and if um, IBM is unchanged, you get a zero. When you add up all the ones, minus ones, and zeros, you come up with a number. And if it's minus 700, the blue line, that's extreme. If it's minus 1,000, the red line, that's even more extreme. And usually the first time you hit a very extreme tick level, it's not going to be the final low in price. So traders will sell the rally, betting that we're going to go at least a little bit lower. Remember, today's Friday, and this week is outside down, and that makes last week's low important. Will this week close below last week's low? If it does, that would be more bearish. If it does not, um, that would be um, still bearish but less bearish. So it looks like the market is looking at last week's low. Again, the prices are not exact. They're all crazy. So it says last week's low is 3016.40. It cannot be 0 0.40, right? So um, this is not precise. But it looks like this is a self climax testing last week's low. I'm going to get rid of that measured move. The market is ignoring it. And I did not sell. I did not sell. Did not buy. It. Did nothing below 16. So I'm currently flat. But it looks like we're getting vacuum down to last week's low weekly chart. Last week's low, you can say, well, Al, aren't you just use the um, June contract for last week's low? Here's the September contract weekly chart. So the September contract, last week's low is 3017.75. Remember, we're on the September contract right now. Put this 3017.75 approximately. So that's around last week's low on the September contract. In June contract, last week's low is on 30.27. So we're well below last week's low on the June contract. Series of cell climaxes. Usually you get exhaustion and you get uh, some kind of a reversal. Sometimes when you get a sell climax on the open like this, you can see we're accelerating down, right? You're getting steeper and steeper, steeper. So if I were to draw trend lines, they keep getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So we're accelerating down. And sometimes you'll get a reversal and you channel up all day. Big sell climax on the open. And it became the low of the day and we rallied for the rest of the day. Lots of examples of cell climaxes after a big gap up. Testing below last week's low, so we're probably bounced here. Can you buy at the market? Um, if you're a computer, you can. If you're an individual trader, um, I would not. I'd look to buy above a decent bull bar. I did not sell this part of it. So I'm flat. For me, there's just, there's just too many cell climaxes. When you have consecutive cell climaxes, it typically attracts profit taking. Also, we're at, I think, a really important price last week's low. Consecutive cell climaxes there. This is kind of like today. Big bear bar, bad follow through, bear bar, bad follow through, bear bar, and then a bull bar. And you expect a pretty strong minor reversal up, at least a couple legs up. One, pull back two, pull back three. So I think we're going to get something like that. Similar to today, cell climax, pause, cell climax, pause, cell climax, and eventually 
you get exhausted bears and they buy back shorts and bulls buy looking for um, a rally here it rallied all day and only retraced half of the sell-off but this is the kind of thing that I think we'll get series of big sell climaxes exhausted bears this is over two days this is kind of like today we got a second leg down and then a reversal series of sell climaxes can you buy above 19 we just broke below the 18 low it's hard to see but we broke below the 18 low so it's possible fail breakout below the 18 low possible low of the day but with these two really big bear bars most bulls will want a micro double bottom so possible low of the day but where's your stop your stop probably would have to be below yesterday's low and that, i think that's too much to risk you know that's 30 points or so so better to wait for a second buy and for the bears um it's too climactic this kind of selling typically attracts profit takers we broke below the 18 bar low so and the range is big only 10 percent chance we'll get back up to a new high but we're going to get probably a, at least a two-hour rally at some point we you know this is right now it's not looking like a very good bottom yet the bulls will probably need at least a micro double bottom and i'm not selling down here i know that we're going to get a reversal and this is too much risk i don't want to be risking 30 points you know i don't like missing it but i'm flat it looks like 16 13 we're more than a measure move based on that so there's that gap for more than a measured move there. Ticks, they have to be really negative. You cannot get three bars that look like that unless a lot of stocks are going down. Let's take a look at ticks. So ticks are well below minus a thousand. So very negative. Typically that's not going to be the final low in price. But this is so extreme, there's a, I think, a significant risk of a sharp reversal. But this is so extreme, there's a, I think, a significant risk of a sharp reversal. Testing 3,000, big round number, testing yesterday's close, which is interesting after such a huge gap up. Traders are wondering, are we going to fall below yesterday's low? Do I still think last week's low is going to be a magnet? I do. So I think, I guess I think we're probably not going below yesterday's low. And I think this is just a sell climax test of support. Last week's low, close of yesterday and on um, yesterday's low. Sometimes you collapse down to near yesterday's low and then reverse. And um, we might be doing that here. I did buy as it was going up, at least for a scalp. Scalps are not two points. They're five points, ten points. I don't know if my mic is on, but I said I bought it as it started to go up um, for a scalp, and scalps are five to ten points, not two points. Um, what I was saying earlier is that sometimes um, the market will test yesterday's low and um, not get below it and reverse up violently and for the rest of the day and today could be a candidate for that so yesterday's low we got near it reverse up yesterday's low we collapsed down to it and reverse up big big sell climax could not get below yesterday's low reverse up sold off relentlessly could not get below yesterday's low Sold off for several hours, could not get below yesterday's low, and reversed off. Collapsed, huge sell off, but it was simply a sell back in test of yesterday's low. 
looks like last week's low is going to be the target. So that might be the middle of the rest of the day. So we went that far below it. Maybe we'll go that far above it. So probably in a range here for at least the next several hours. When's the last time you've seen a bar like that, a huge outside up bar? So if you're a bear and you sold the close of 19 or below 19, what are you thinking? You're thinking, gosh, I sold the bottom of a cell climax and there was a potential for a very big reversal back up, especially since last week's low is an important magnet. So if last week's low is important, it might be in the middle of something. This is too far down, and so we may go up here. So possibly a spike pullback collapse. So we may, the top of the range might be around that 15 high. So how can it possibly be doing this? If it was so bearish here, why is it now so bullish? Because it's purely technical. The computers, they don't have any feelings. They're just looking for how far down is too far. And once they decide it's too far, then uh, they flip and start buying. Failed breakout below the 18 bar range. Huge outside up bar. But the risk is really big. You know, you got a 25 point tall bar. Now, for the bears, they're trying to get, let's say, a low one, 21. Um, but is anybody going to sell below 21? No, nobody's going to sell below 21. A very big reversal after an extreme sell climax. The bears are buying back shorts. That's why 20 looks that way. It's short covering. And if you're a bear and you just bought back your shorts, are you looking to sell again on the next bar? No. You know, if you sold up here, you had a huge profit, and you take that profit, and you're not looking to sell again. If you were thinking that you'd sell again on the next bar, you would not have exited. I did not think we would get to the Globex low, but we're very close to it. Went above the Globex high, and this is the Globex low. Is it a buy above 20? Sure. You know, it's a a sell climax and a big bull bar closing on its high, but you only take it if you can risk all the way down below 20. So huge risk. So you have to trade micro E minis. And for the bears, it's a low one below 21, but huge sell climax and huge reversal up from the sell climax. I would wait for a couple legs sideways to up before thinking about selling again. So the bear is a low one, but I would not sell it. When you have these huge bars like that, the bulls don't want to risk that much. A lot of them will buy it around a 50% pullback, which is where we are now, or they'll look for a reversal up from a 50% pullback and buy that. And for the bears, it's a low one, but probably buyer's blow. So I would not sell below. Um, 20, uh, I would not sell below 21. It's probably more buy the close than sell the close. But if you do buy, your stop is below 20. So your risk is still pretty big. If the bulls are lucky, they'll get an II with a bull bar 22. I talked about ticks. And look at the ticks. Extremely low tick level. Um, is it going to be, um, are we going to get a new low of the day? I don't know, this is so extreme, plus we've had a series of extreme tick levels. Sometimes you do not, sometimes the low tick level ends up as the low price. So I would not be selling here expecting a new low in price. Low one for the bears, but I think probably buyers below, and that will get a second leg sideways to up. So I'm not going to sell below 21. If we're lucky, we'll get a decent bull bar, 22, 23, 24, for a stop entry buy.
the mayors are hoping that the extreme low in ticks is not the final low in price, but I think we're probably going to get a second leg up before we break below the low of the day, and this might remain the low of the day. For the bulls to buy, they want a bull bar closing on its high, but they don't want the bar to be huge, like 20 or like 22. And for the bears, um, with that big reversal of 20, I did not want to sell below 21. So I'm waiting to see if we get a decent buy signal bar for a stop entry buy 21. Can you buy with a limit order below 20? Uh, when the market's collapsing like this, I don't want to be buying with limit orders. This is an interesting situation right here. Can you buy at the market and put a stop below 20, betting that we're not going to get below 20? Um, you're only risking a point or so, and the potential reward is huge. And you can see if you took that trade, you get stopped out. However, it's an example of a very small risk, very big reward trade. So if you bought a ticket two above the 20 low, put a stop a ticket two below, you're risking one point. You're hoping that we break above the neckline from a double bottom and go up here. So you're risking one point to make 40 points. So a tremendous risk reward. But whenever you have tremendous risk reward, you have very little chance of um, succeeding because there has to be a reason for someone to take the other side of your trade. And if you have tremendous risk reward, they have very high probability, you have very low probability. So you're buying a lottery ticket, they're selling you a lottery ticket. So you pay a dollar hoping to win a million, but the odds are you're not going to make any money. So high two, 23, possible low of the day, but the bulls would like to get a bull bar closing near its high. And it's big enough right now, they don't want it to get too big. They don't want it to look like 20. But you can see, here we broke to a new low of the day, yet there were more buyers than sellers. Suppose it keeps going down. Am I ever going to get short again? Um, I will at some point, but these bars are too big, so the risk is big. And we have had a series of consecutive sell climaxes, and you typically get a um, reversal before long. So I'm waiting. Now, I said we might not fall below the 20 low. What about yesterday's low? Can you place a limit order to buy a point or two above yesterday's low and put a stop um, a few ticks below yesterday's low? So you're risking two or three points. The math is actually okay. You're taking a chance that we're going to do this. So you buy the close and you buy just above yesterday's low, put a stop just below, and the reward is 10 times bigger. And that's true here as well. Now for the bulls, it's a high two with 19, but a big bar, 23, and a big, um, and it plus a bare body. So it's really not a very good looking high two. If the bears did sell again below 21, I would get out above 23. And for the bulls, they're not quite getting what they need. If, if they're lucky, maybe we'll get a bull inside bar 24. 24 multiple of 12 is the end of the second hour. Bulls hoping for a double bottom, a break above the neckline and measure move up. So that's, this is what the bulls want. And the bears want a strong breakout below. To me, it looks like big down, big up, big down again, big confusion. So I suspect that we're going to be sideways here. This leg is not as strong as that leg, so probably fewer stocks. And you can see we have a higher low in ticks. So a new low in price, but we have a divergence. We have a higher low in ticks, so fewer stocks went down. Also, the volume is less. The volume here, we have fewer stocks going to the total volume of shares is less and the total number of stocks going down is less. So as the market's going down, we're getting less trading. Fewer stocks are going down and the total volume of stocks um, is less. 
The purpose of the market is to facilitate trading, increase trading. And here, as we're going down, we're getting less trading, and therefore the market probably will go up. But the bulls want a good bull bar. The bars are still very big. So if you buy, let's say 24 is a bull bar closing near its high, and you buy it for a high two, I think you're going to trade really small. We might get a wedge. So it might be one pullback, two pullback, three. So we may get one more leg down. Yesterday's low is a magnet, and there's still room to it. It would be better for the bulls if we did get one more leg down. That would be a higher probability reversal. We just went below the Globex low. So huge Globex range, um, 80 points. We went above the Globex high and below the Globex low. And that's, I'm sure that's part of the reason we're bouncing. We just broke below the Globex low. So high two, but a bear doji and um, so lower probability. So right now I'm trapped out. Some bulls bought the 21 low, and they bought more lower, 5, 10, 15 points lower, and they just made money. So with even with a huge sell-off, bulls are starting to make money. They bought the 21 low, they bought the 20 low, and they're starting to make money with limit orders. So that is consistent with um, the bear trend um, getting exhausted. So if a trader were to buy above a bull bar 24, they're risking 20 points. So if you're trading E-minis, you probably cannot take that. You can always buy a micro E-mini, or you can wait for the bars to get smaller. Do the bears have to get out above 23? I would. As I said, I'm hoping that we get one more leg down and then a third reversal up. And that would be a higher probability buy, and it would be, um, I think, a pretty good candidate for the low of the day. Well, these are two very big reversals up, so I think the odds are we've probably seen the low of the day or the low of the next um, couple of hours. There's another low one, 25. This is one of those situations in which a lot of traders are aware of the possibility of a wedge. And if everybody thinks it's a great buy, if we get below 23 and reverse up, there'll be buyers above the 23 low. And a lot of times you'll get a higher low, so a truncated wedge. For the bears, another low one in a bear trend. And we might get below 23, but um, I think either Either way, either we get a higher low or we go below 23, I think we're going to reverse up. So I think um, we're probably near the end of the sell-off. So I'm not going to sell below 25. I did not sell below 21. If you buy the 25 low, do you put a stop below 23? Um, that would be reasonable. Another alternative is to put a stop far below, like 15, 20 points below thinking that we may get one last plunge and then a reversal up. What happens if we get a bull inside bar 25? For the bulls, it's a high one. They're hoping this is a low in the day, and it might be. It's a credible low. Um, we have two big, big reversals up, and we're around an important price last week's low and yesterday's low. Reversals up, and we're around an important price last week's low and yesterday's low. But if you do, let's say 25 is an inside bar and you buy above 25, at a minimum stop is below 23, so you have to trade very small. How far can we go? I said the low last week might be the middle of things, so it's possible that we go all the way back up there Probably always in long, right? But if you're buying, you need to stop way down there. Bears want double top 20 and a new low. So double top neckline 
and eventually moved down. But I think more likely we've seen the low of the next couple of hours, maybe the low of the day. So if we sell off, probably buyers somewhere in the middle, maybe around the 23 high. So if the bulls are lucky, they'll get a higher low with a decent buy signal bar. For the bears, um, double top, I would not take the short. I think we're always in long. Will bears sell 20 high moving average? Um, I would not. I'd, I'd be long or flat. Bulls trying to get a measure move up. So bulls either buy for any reason or they'll look to buy a pullback. Bears want double top 20. But if we sell off, I would like it to sell off. I'd like it to come down and form a higher low. That way there um, we'll have a smaller risk. I've bought um, several times in here. And scalps here are four or five points, ten points, not not two points. If we do get a sell-off and a higher low, that would be a, a credible swing looking for a rally for an hour or two. Target above, target above the most recent sell climax high, which is the 17 high, and also that bull bar 15. So we're probably going up there. Where will the bears sell again? We just went always in long. Um, I would not be looking to sell. When the market goes always in long, the bears often do something early on to make traders think that it's a bull trap and that the bear trend will resume. But probably um, the reversal attempt down will fail. And we're probably going to be sideways to up for at least an hour or two, possibly the rest of the day. With these big reversals and the early trading range trading, um, I think we'll be in a trading range probably around last week's low. And then at the end of the day, decide to close a little bit above or a little bit below last week's low. Bears double top 20, but always in long. I would not sell below 27. As I said, if the bulls are lucky, we'll pull back and form a high one or maybe a high two. Right now, stop is all the way down here, 40 points. So if you're long, you got to be trading really small. The bears double top 20, but always in long buyers below. But where are the buyers? Are they? Just one tick below 27, or are they down at the 23 high? So not a great limit or uh, setup. And for the bulls, always in long, bull trend, high 127, but a bear bar, so not a strong buy. So what do you do? Um, reasonable to get out of longs below 27, but it's unlikely that we're going to reverse down to below 23. So theoretically, bulls do not have to get out below 27. I would, and then you can always buy again. Possible O, -O possible II, so high one bull flag. Can we go a lot higher? I think we're going up to the 15 high, the 17 high. It's possible we pull back first, but I think that's where the market is headed, the top of the most recent sell climax, the 17 high. It's possible we pull back first, but I think that's where the market is headed, the top of the most recent sell climax. Bear body, so not a very good buy above 27. So I did not buy above 27, even though I think we're going up here. I, I, I'd rather buy above a bull bar, so I'll wait to see if we get a high two. You can see the hesitation. It's a high one, but... Stop far below plus bear bar. A lot of bulls did not buy above 27. Can you short right here? My guess is the bears will make money, but I'd rather be selling with stops. Also, when the market just becomes always in long, I'm, I'm usually not eager to sell. The bears a wedge 20. 
26, 28. If we get a bear bar closing on our nearest low and closing below the moving average, some bears might take the sell, but I still think it's better to be looking to buy. Wedge, 20, 26. Micro double top, 26, 28. Neckline is the 27 low. What happens if we get a bear bar, 29? Closing near its low, closing below the moving average. We'll probably get a pullback, um, but I'm not sure that it's worth uh, shorting <clears throat> because we might just go sideways. We have, an, I think, an obvious target above the sell climax high 17, the bull bar 15. So it makes me hesitant to sell. Also, we just went always in long and the market often has a one or two bar quick move down to trap bulls on their good longs. So I think there's, there's not a lot of potential for the bears. Well, high two, always in long targets above, but four bar tight trading range and only a doji buy signal bar. So not a very good looking buy above 29 and not a very good looking sell below 29. We should go higher. I think the market is simply deciding if it's going to test down before going higher. And most bulls want it to test down. They want to buy a higher load down here. And whenever something is obvious you know, or obviously good for the bulls, they're probably not going to get it. Or if they do get it, it won't look the way they want it to look. So if everybody is eager to buy, Usually, it's not going to come down. We're not going to come down much. I did not take the buy, the high one, 27, and I did not take the high two, 29, because I think those bulls need to stop down here, and that's risking 40 points, and that's more than I want to risk. What happened to all that bearishness? <clears throat> Sell vacuum test of support. So what appeared to be bearish was simply um, traders testing support. Can we get all the way back up to the high of the day? It's possible, but I don't think so. We've sold off a long way. We broke low bar 18, the bottom of the 18 bar range. And usually if you get a reversal, it's not going to get back up to the high of the day. Bears want a wedge, 20, 26, 30. But so far, this is pretty strongly up. We're at the first target, the top of the sell climax high, 17. But we might test the 16 high and uh, the top of our 15. Um, I don't think we're going a lot higher before pulling back. So a possible wedge, one, two, three, plus we're at the 17 sell climax high. It's a logical location for bulls to cover their longs, long, co long covering, so profit taking. If we get a bear bar 31, would I short this? I would feel better about shorting if 28 had gone below 27. And because it did not, we now have a nine bar bull microchannel. And the first reversal down typically does not get very far. So a lot of the bears looking for a wedge will want a um, micro double top. I would get out of longs below any bear bar because it is a wedge and it is a double top 17, but because it's a nine bar dual micro channel, it's a lower probability sell below 31 without at least a micro double top. Bulls hoping that this is going to be a gap and then we go up here. They're hoping that the double bottom will lead to a measure move up, either from the higher of the two lows or from the lower of the two lows. But since we're at a logical target, probably not going much higher. Remember I said the low of last week might be the middle of today's trading. So um, we're probably near the top of the developing range. Might go up a little bit higher, but probably not much higher. We're around a 50% pullback, a little bit more. 
and we're in a logical area for bulls to take profits. So we'll probably get a pullback soon. But the bears, if they want to sell, they want a bear bar closing on or near its low. They don't want to sell below a bull bar. Can you start to scale into shorts, thinking that last week's low was going to be the middle of a developing trading range? I'm not looking to short yet. If we get a micro bubble top and a bear bar, then I'll, uh, I'll look to short. Remember, these lines are not exact because trade station has not yet rolled over their contracts. Trade station says they get their data directly from the CME, and some data vendors have already rolled the contracts over, but I think those data vendors probably did it on their own. I talked with the CME about how they determine the prices, and they said they have some proprietary formula. In other words, they were not going to tell me. You can always just look at the September and the June contracts and see what the difference is and then back adjust all the prices on the daily chart by that amount. But I'm going to wait for the official um, measurement because it's never exactly what you think it is. Arguably, by the close, we have a 10-bar <coughs> bull microchannel, but I would not buy it. I think we're going to get a pullback very soon. I said the target was the 16 high, the 17 high, the 15 high. That's where we are. <clears throat> it's also around a measure move up from the low of the day to the low of last week. So we should get some profit taking here. Also a possible wedge, one, two, and three. All right, get out of longs below any bear bar. And for the bears, it's not a great short, despite the wedge and the measure move target because it's a 10-bar bull microchannel, so it's not ideal. It's higher probability to wait for a micro double top or a low two. So as much as I'd like to short, I did not short that. If you short it, you probably need a wide stop, maybe somewhere up here. The problem for the bears is Yes, we have a wedge, but we have a 10-bar bull microchannel, a small sell signal bar, and we might get a third leg up. So instead of one, two, three, it could be one pullback, two pullback, three. So I'd rather wait for a second sell signal. And for the bulls, they want a high 133, but it would be a third leg up, one pullback, two pullback, three, and we're in the sell zone. So I'm not going to be buying about uh, 33. So I would either be short or flat. 33 looks like a surprise bar down, and it reduces the chances that we'll get a third leg up, one, two, three. Increases the chances that it's already a third leg up, one, two, and three. So probably a couple legs sideways to down, buy climax and a wedge. but still always in long. The 10 bar bull micro channel from the 23 low, I think reduces the chances of this falling very far. So the bulls are high one and they're hoping for one more leg up. When a leg up is as strong as this is, usually you get three legs up. So one pull back, two pull back, three. So high one thirty three, but not a great looking buy signal bar. Plus probably not much higher. Maybe we'll go a little bit above thirty two, not much. Mark is deciding do we get the third leg up? I talked about that down here that we might get a third leg down, one pullback, two pullback, and I said that the bulls were so eager to buy that we might not get the third leg down. Still always in long, and I think this rally is so strong that we're going to get one more push up. So high one, 33, but bear bar. Bulls trying to get a better high one, 
buy a single bar of 34. Probably sellers not too far above 32 for a wedge one, two, and three. Some bears sell 33 high, other bears sell 32 high, and stop entry bears will wait for a breakout above 32 to reverse down, and then they'll sell below a bear bar. Bulls, not a great buy signal, consecutive bear bars, and a third leg up. Plus, we're probably not going a lot higher. The bulls are hoping this is a measuring gap and that we get up to the high of the day. But right now, down here, I said 10% chance. You know, now maybe 30% chance we go up to the high of the day, new high. 70% chance we do not make a new high of the day. Whenever you look at it and it's confusing, it's because the bears are becoming more equal to the bulls. So possibly more sellers than buyers above 33, above 32, and fewer bulls willing to buy. They see a possible wedge already. I don't know if my mic was on, but when things are unclear, that tells you bulls and bears are about equal. And when things are unclear, if you're betting, it's not going to go too far up or down. Bulls buy, buy more lower. Bears sell, sell more higher. Might come down to the low of last week. Remember I said that could be a magnet all day, and it could be the middle of the day's range. Market's deciding if we're going to go up. But if we do go up, we'll probably have a wedge, one, two, and three. This leg is so strong that you know, chances are we're, go we're going to get a third leg up. Whenever you got a really strong leg like this, you expect at least a second leg up, but you typically get a third leg up. And the market's deciding, are we going to get the third leg up? The bulls are hoping this is a measuring gap and we go all the way up to the high of the day. But I think probably this is going to be a magnet all day, so it's probably going to be the middle of the developing trading range. So it looks like we're not going to get the third leg up, but difficult to short here. You got limit order bears 33 high, but not a lot of bears are going to sell below the lower high 34. <laughs> Target, we have a tight trading range here, and we also have the low of last week here, so we might get a pullback here. We have a breakout above 20, so there are several magnets here. Surprise bar down 35, so we're probably at least a little bit more down. Magnets below the 20 high, and then the tight training range, 29 low, and the low of last week. So the bulls are high two, 33, but surprise bar down 35. I, know, I think it's probably not going to be a very good buy, 36. 36 is the end of the hour, and the hour opened with bar 25, so we have a bull body. You can see 60-minute chart, we have a bull inside bar. <clears throat> Bulls are hoping to get the bar to close on or near its high, double bottom, and they want a good buy signal bar, but more likely it will be more sideways. A huge sell-off, unlikely to go up without going sideways, more than just a few bars. Bulls trying to get good buy signal bar 36, but probably we're going to get more sideways to them. How low can we, <clears throat> how low can we go? Well, we're at a logical support area. The low of last week, remember I said that we're probably going to form a trading range and the low of last week might be the middle of it. <clears throat> That's why I said that the rally might end around a measure move up from the low to, to the low of last week. Now we're in the buy zone. So you'll probably get some bulls buying with limit orders. Stop order bulls want a high two with 33. Can we get back down to the low of the day? Um, right now, I think we've probably seen both the high and low for the rest of the day. 
mean? So is this cell the close? No, we're in the buy zone. So better to be looking to buy a reversal up. We might come down to the 23 high, a bad buy signal bar, but I don't think we're going a lot lower. Three legs down, one pull back, two pull back, three. We're in the buy zone, but where are the bull bars? We're around a 50% retracement and we're at a support level. <clears throat> Can you buy above 38, high to 33? I think this is, we're in the middle of a developing trading range and we have a pair of pretty good bear bars. So if you're buying about 38, I think you still need to stop all the way down here. Otherwise, you wait for a micro level bottom. And can you sell down here? Nope. Trading range likely, and probably the low of last week will probably be the middle of it. <clears throat> so probably not going much lower, you know, maybe to the 23 high. And my voice is starting to hurt. The throat's starting to hurt, so I'm going to switch to typing. So buying 38, I think better to wait for a micro double bottom and sell the close. Um, I would not. Middle of a developing trading range, pretty low from the high. I did buy the um, OO. In fact, I bought about 56, and I bought more about 59, and I just took part off. Bulls are trying to get back to um, above 3,000, which they are, and they're trying to get up to the low of last week. We had an outside down bar 54, and we had an outside up bar 55, and that's often a good setup for a breakout mode. Since it's at the bottom of a sell climax, I thought it would not be a very good sell below because I did not think we would go much lower. This is already overdone, and the bulls had a first attempt reverse up 53, only a small doji in a tight bear channel, so not a very strong buy. But then when you had the 00 55, that would be a second buy, and minimum ballpark target would be measured move up based upon the 00 but the market really wants to get back to last week's low. We had a spike pullback channel, so the start of the channel is also a target. Surprise bar up, always in long. I don't know how high up we get, but uh, since we were in this area, I said that the, we may have a trading range around the low of last week for the rest of the day. We went further. Well, the move up was about a measure move. That made sense. This lasted longer than I thought it would, but profitable, very, very profitable trade buying above 55. You know, relatively, you can say Alice, not all that big a deal. It's 100 points. So if you make 10 or 20 points, it's no big deal on the trade. But, you know, it's still, in terms of dollars, you know, it's good money. I have been trading my um, usual Size I have not been cutting back, even though the bars are big. That creates a little bit more stress. But the price action is you know, reasonably um, good, pretty easy to read. Surprise bar up 61, but um, big tail on top. So um, I'm exiting on the way down here. I'm back to flat. I still think we're going higher. Can you sell below 61, wedge 55, 57? We reached about a measure move up based upon the height of the OO pattern. True, but the low of last week has been a magnet all day, and we're getting late in the day, so, and plus it's a Friday, so that's important. You know, this week on the weekly chart is outside down. And that's significant, especially coming in an overbought market. And it would be better for the bears if they can close the week below last week's low. The bulls have been in control for three months. They're going to fight 
to prevent this week from closing below last week. So um, there's a magnet at last week's low here at the end of the week. This is not uh, as strongly up as I wanted it to be. Then we got three big bull bodies, 55, 57, 61, but all with very prominent tails. And that lowers the probability of this going a lot higher. I'm back to flat. It still should get to last week's low, and it probably will finish the week somewhere around last week's low. For the bears, they're hoping it's a wedge, another lower high in a bear channel. We have a high, a lower high, and they want another lower high. I'm not going to, I'm not going to short for two reasons. I think we probably just went always in long on 61 and, and usually don't like to short as soon as the market becomes always in long. And then we have that magnet up there of last week's low. So um, while I'm, I'm back to flat, I'm out of longs. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take the short. I'll wait to see what happens over the next few bars. You know, maybe we'll go sideways and get a high one or a high two, just above the moving average. There's wedge, but tight channel and important magnet just above, plus we're above the moving average. So if we get a micro double top, I might sell, but I'm not going to sell below 62. And 62 right now is an inside bar. It's a high one buy signal bar, but it has a, a bare body. And if it closes near its low, um, I'm not going to buy above 62. If it's a small bull bar, I might buy for a scalp up. Obviously, it's a short, but I'm not going to take it tight channel um, and magnet above. There's always a bear and bull way to look at everything. And this clearly is a wedge in a bear channel good for the bears, and a good sell signal bar. The bulls are hoping that this is a small pullback bull trend, that we pull back for a bar and then continue up, pull back for a bar, continue up. By the way, on the daily chart, I've mentioned many times over the past month or so that we're in a small pullback bull trend, and every pullback is small. And every pullback was either one, two, or three bars. And until this pullback, this is the first time we've had more than a three-bar pullback. With today going below yesterday's low, this is a four-bar pullback. So it's the um, deepest, uh, most, the most number of bars, the longest duration pullback that we've had in three months. Plus, we have the island top, and this is a double top with the February high, slightly lower high, but double top. The thing the bulls have in their favor is a tight bull channel that has gone on for a long time. And therefore, we might have to go sideways before we can go down. Bulls hoping 63 is just a one-bar pullback in a bull channel. I think we're going higher. We have a spike pause channel. We have a spike pause channel. So this is a target. We got close to it. I don't think close enough. We got close to the low of last week, and I suspect not close enough. So I think at some point before the end of the day, we're going to be back at the low of last week, and then at the end of the day, the market will decide whether to close a little bit above it or a little bit below it. Can we close far above it? It's possible, but look at the chart. You know, we sold off for two hours here. We sold off for two hours here. We rallied for one hour. So the bears have been in control for a lot longer than the bulls. That, I think, lowers the chance that we'll get a big rally here. For the bulls, a high one, a weak sell setup, tight bull channel, magnets above, but not a great-looking high one. We have a bear bar 62, and now 63 is a big bar. So if you buy above 63, the risk is big. If you buy above 63, at a minimum, your stop is below 63, so um, you're risking 10 points. And plus, you're buying after a bear bar, and now 63 is a bear bar as well. So um, for me, I'm flat, not good enough to buy, and I think we're going higher. So even though normally it would be good enough to sell, we have, I think, an important magnet above. 
you know, I, I said yesterday and I've been saying today that at the end of the week, the market would decide what to do with last week's low. This is the end of the week. You know, we have an hour, hour and a half left, and we're, we're not quite there. I think we, we need to get there and then see what happens. Do we suddenly break strongly above it and go up here, or do we go up to it and stall and enter a tight trading range, or do we go up to it and collapse down to a new low, to a big wedge, one, two, and three? But we need the information that, that we'll get if it gets to that blue line. So I think everybody wants to know, so I think we're probably going there. Not much to do here. I would either, I'm currently flat, but I would either be long or flat. Despite the wedge 62, we have, I think, a very important magnet just a little bit above, and we're at the end of the week, and the market typically likes to test nearby weekly support and resistance in the final hour. Well, we're almost in the final hour, and the market is telling us that this is important weekly support and resistance. We went outside down yesterday, and we've oscillated around last week's low today. And there's significance if the market closes above or below last week's low. And it's so we're so close to it, I think, you know, we have to get there and then see what happens to get there and then see what happens. Well, it's bullish. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to wait. The bulls want to break strongly above it and get up here. And the bears want to reverse down from it and get down here. Struggling to get there. Sometimes it'll get almost there and reverse. Bears, they'll be more willing to sell below 67 if it's a bear bar closing near its low because we're close enough to it for a lot of traders to believe that it has been adequately tested. What's more, what's most likely, most likely we're going at least a tick above it. But if 67 is a bear bar closing on its low, um, that would be a, a reasonable short or at least a test down. You can see we're just about there. Now the wedge is 57.61, but for bears to sell, they want to see a decent bear sell signal bar. I have my finger on the button, but we're not getting the bear bar that I want, so I'm not going to do anything. Sometimes the market gets very close to the open and then reverses. Open of the day, trading range day. We poked above it a couple of times, and then we had a huge sell-off into the close. Open of the day, tested it, tested it and reverse down. Open of the day, kept trying to get back to it, unable, kept selling off. Open of the day, got above it, got above it, sold off, end of the day. Sometimes it gets above it and it just oscillates around it. Went above it, sold off, went above it again. Sometimes it gets above it and it just oscillates around it. Went above it, sold off, went above it again. Here we sold down to the open of the day and broke above it, went sideways for the rest of the day. Sideways above it, below it. Here, spent all day above the open of the day and it was support. Support, uh, support, support, collapsed down to it, end of the day. Support, support, and then came back into the day. Support came back to it at the end of the day. Today we're approaching it from below. So that's why I have these examples. Bulls are hoping to break strongly above it, but it does not look like there's much energy in the market right now. We have an hour left, so there's still time to get a surprisingly big move up or down. I think it's unlikely that we'll get back to the high of the day. The bulls would like to get back up here. We had a very strong rally here, 
so the bulls know they have the ability to get up to up there. But so far, um, this is not strong enough to make a lot of traders want to buy at the high of the leg. I was using an example of open of the day as an end of the magnet, but here it's not the open of the day, it's the low of last week. The idea is still the same, end of the day, and there's an important magnet. Still bull channel, but Doji 66, tail 67, 68, <clears throat> not strong enough for me to be buying at the high, but and bullish enough for me not to be selling. Also, in the final hour, it's more difficult to scale in either to um, longs as it goes down or shorts as it goes up. So right now, I'm, I prefer to look for stop entries, but sometimes you don't get them. Sometimes it just becomes a very quiet um, sideways market and more of a limit order market. I sometimes will trade limit orders at the end of the day, but I much prefer stop orders. Um, and sometimes I'll scale in, but usually not, both because of the issue of running out of time and um, you know, I had a good day, don't want to give anything back, and I'm tired, and so I'm slower to think, slower to grab the mouse, and prone to make more mistakes. Remember, most traders make enough, they have enough wins to make a living as a trader, and most traders who are not making money are, are losing, losing because they take too many bad trades or they make too many mistakes. They're taking enough good trades, but they're also making too many mistakes. And for me, it's a mistake to um, trade when I'm tired. And it's also a mistake to get outside of my comfort zone. There are certain types of trades that I like. So I become more selective at the end of the day. Also, the scaling in um, is just not, I don't want to do it. Here we have six bars without a bare body. So theoretically, buyers below. 69, but I'm not going to take the buy. I'm going to wait. Surprise bar down and possibly spike pull that channel, but not strong enough for me to do anything with it. Um, six bull bars here. I don't want to sell below. And we have a pair of bear bars, but we're right at the moving average. Um, I think the math is difficult, so I'm going to wait. Six bull bars makes me not eager to sell without at least a small double top. Bulls, higher, low, double bottom, 63. But two bear bars and a doji bar, so not a very good buy. And for the bears, um, it's just not, it's, it's a higher low and six bull bars and magnet right here, tail, 70. Doji 72, uh, I'm trapped out. Not good for stop entries. Selling below 71, below 72, buying above 72. I'm on micro level bottom, target above, but two decent bear bars. Possible head and shoulder stop, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, wedge, one, two, three. Often get two legs down, one pull back, two. So I did not take the buy. You can see for the past hour, we've been within striking distance of last week's low. One bar can get us there, no matter which of the bars um, over the past hour. We were, we were always within about one bar of last week's low. And we may stay that way until the end of the day. And then suddenly either close above it or close below it. Right now, there's just no energy, not a lot of eager traders. Normally, if it's fairly quiet into 12.45, I don't take any more trades, and that probably is going to be the case here. And the reason for that is, as a trader, I want to make money. And I know that if it is fairly quiet in a tight range at 12.45, it's very difficult to make money. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and if you take 10 trades, 
you know, um, half will win a little, half will lose a little, and you'll end up with no profit. So my goal is not to take a lot of trades and break break even at the end of 10 trades. My goal is to take a lot of trades and be richer after the 10 trades than when I started. And if the market is in a tight trading range going into 12.45, um, it's very difficult to make a living trading that. So um, I usually just wait for the next trading day, Monday. There's still a chance, but that we'll get a buy the close or sell the close finish, but it's unlikely. Bulls trying to accelerate up. I'm flat. You know, if 76 closes near its high, it is it would be buy the close for the bulls to try to get all the way back up to the 32 high. I think I probably am not going to take it. But, you know, fairly big up, fairly big down, tails, tails, and these bars are not especially big. But if we start to get bigger bars, um, I might try to get one more scalp. How far up can we go? Well, next target is here. The bulls were strong enough to get us there earlier today. They're hoping to get back there. The minimum goal is just to have the week close above last week's low. For the bulls, the double bottom, 63.72, and they would like to get a measured move up, and that would take us in the neighborhood of that 32 high. Can you sell with a limit order, 69, betting on a failed breakout? Nope. You know, too late in the day to be trading with a limit order against a rally because it's been so quiet over the past 15 bars plus I'll be talking in 10 minutes I'm, I'm going to let this go what do the bulls do if they bought the 76 close of the 76 high well a lot of them scalp for five points and that's a good re part of the reason why we have that big tail on the top of um, 77 is it still sell? Uh, is it still buy the close? Um, yeah, I did. I did not take the trade, but it's still buy the close. We have another bull bar, uh, 77. It's too late in the day. And if we trade down on 78, what do you do if you buy the 77 close? Looking at this, there's probably not a lot of profit potential for the bulls. And the risk, where's your stop if you do buy the close? Is it below 77? Or do you wait for a bear bar and then get up below bear bar? Um, I think it's too complicated and not much profit potential. So better to wait. Although today did not feel as extreme as yesterday, the range was almost as big. Another 100-point range day. What's different today is we had Three things, three signs of strength on the part of the bulls. We did not have that yesterday. We had a big gap up, and then we had two rallies, and the rallies were, were big. They may not look big, but in terms of points, there were 50-point rallies. So that's good for the bulls. The bulls are hoping that this is a lower, low major trend reversal, and that we're going to continue up on Monday. So it's a, a lower, low major trend reversal. Every major trend reversal is a type of double bottom. So the bulls want to break above the neckline and a measure move up. They're trying to undo the two-day sell-off. Today was actually the fourth day down from the high, the fourth day in a pullback. And that is the first time that we've had a four-day pullback since the bull trend began back in March. So that's um, better for the bears. And then we had that big surprise bar down Friday, excuse me, yesterday, good for the bears. And we have a bear body today, good for the bears. However, today closed back in the middle of the day's range and above yesterday's low and above last week's low. So not so good for the bears. We may go sideways and try to test up um, maybe into the gap next week. The bears will want a lower high and then a second leg down in the bulls hoping that we gap up on Monday or Tuesday and turn this into an island bottom 
and then they want the bull trend to continue up to the all-time high. At the moment, it's, I think, slightly more likely that we've begun a correction. However, the market has been very strong for several months, and I think it's wrong to assume that the bulls cannot regain control. They certainly can. We had a big gap up on the open, and first bar was a bear bar. So nobody wants to buy a little bear bar. We had a bull bar on bar two, but we we're far above the moving average, plus we had a bear bar of one. We tried to reverse down on three, so that would be a sell climb, a buy climax, and a reversal down. But usually, if you get two big bull bars and a reversal down like that, you're going to go sideways. Also, when you get a big gap up, you're probably going sideways, so you'd expect some kind of a trading range open. The minimum that you need for a trading range open is two reversals. So after the first bar, you want to see a reversal down and a reversal up in either order. And we had a reversal down below three, reversal up above six, so breakout mode trading range type of open. Not a good sell below three, probably buyer's low. And they made money buying the three low and scaling it lower, seven and then above that three low. And then the bulls had a high two bull flag or a double bottom bull flag, one and six. But fairly conspicuous tail, fairly small body. I think we're always in short with the big bear bar four and the follow through five. So I, I would not take that by six. Also, in the first five bars, we had three bear bars and we're way far above the moving average. So nobody wants to buy that. So not a good buy. The bear's got a second reversal down below eight and it closed near its low. So it's a credible candidate for the high of the day. <clears throat> second failed breakout above yesterday's bear channel. And um, so it's a credible candidate. Bear's got a decent bar. Nine, but bad follow through 10, and the bulls who bought the six low made money. But then something happened with 11, and I, I mentioned it uh, earlier today, that it did not get above the nine low. It got above the six low, so the bulls who bought the six low and the one low made money, buying more lower. But the bulls who bought that eight low, which uh, after two bull bars, some bulls might have bought the eight low, they did not make money, and they gave up on 12. So 12 was a sign that the bulls are giving up. It's similar to seven and um, three. The bulls have bought the three low, were very disappointed by four, five, and they decided that they were just trying to get out break even, which they did on seven, and that led to eight, nine. The bulls who did not take the opportunity to get out break even panicked out on nine. And over here, the bulls who were unable to get back to the eight low, they panicked out on 12. So we have a possible bear breakout below 10 and possibly a measure move down. Weak follow through 11. So we have a pair of bear bars, four, five, and then a bull bar. A pair of bear bars, nine, 10, and then a bull bar. A big bear bar, 12, and then a bull bar. So yes, we're in a bear channel and we're probably going to go lower. But because of those bull bars, the bad follow through, it uh, makes me think that no matter how low we go, we will get a reversal up at some point. So uh, it looks more like a bear leg in what will be a trading range and less like a bear trend similar to yesterday. The bulls tried to get a reversal up on 15, but tail on the top of 15 plus fairly big bear bar. So I would not buy above 15. It's a possible low of the day. You can call it a parabolic wedge, 9, 12. 14, but I think the bulls need a second buy signal. And then 16 did something interesting. Um, it's a doji bar, so it went down and went up and went up and went down, closed in the middle, but it also did not get above that 13 low. So here we have trapped bulls who uh, bought the 8 low, 9, 11 did not go above 8, and now we have a, a, a weak sell signal bar 13. Some bulls bought the low, bought more lower. And yet they're trapped. 16 did not go above that 13 low. So 14 might be a measuring gap. So this is looking more bearish. For the bears, it's a low one sell signal. It's a bear doji, not great, but it's a possible breakout test. 13 low and possible swing down. Surprise bar down 17, probably going lower. And then 18, 19, three bear bars. Um, good for the bears, but I still think it's consecutive. 
cell climaxes, cell climax, cell, 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 cell. Plus, we cannot overlook this gap up. The bulls are hoping that this entire sell-off is a bull flag from this gap up. And it turned out that's what it was. We went below the 19 low and had a huge bull bar 20. Is it a possible low today? Uh, I think it's reasonable to buy above 20, but you probably need a wide stop. And I would not put it just a few ticks below 20. And the bears had a low one 21. And I said that if the bulls are lucky, they'll get a second reversal off. And they did, 23. A bear doji, three bear bars is not great, but it's a high two bottom. And you either buy above 23 or above 24 or above 25 and hope that we get a measure move up. We have a lower low double bottom, a high two neckline might go up for a measure move. And at that point, I said, you know, we broke below last three weeks low. We broke below it again. We reversed up twice. It looks like the market may pay attention to last week's low. And if last week's low is important, then it could be the middle of something. And if we started a move up from here, maybe the move will end about a measure move up. And it ended almost exactly at a measure move up. Also, targets for the bears, the top of the most recent sell climax, the 17 high. And that buy signal, about 15, not great, but a target, and maybe a double top 16, which we got. We got a double top 16, 32. We broke below the neckline 23. I did not think we would fall for a mission move down, but we did fall further down than I thought we would. For the bulls on the way up over here, I said we might get one more push down to a wedge, one, two, three, but there'll be so many bulls looking to buy it after the big bull bar 20 and the two bull bars 24, 25, that we might not get down there. If everybody wants to buy, um, traders will buy as it's going up, just in case it does not go down. And if enough of them buy as it's going up, then this will be uh, the bottom. we got to swing up from 24. The bulls have a high one, 27. A bear bar, not great, but three bull bars, we should get at least a small second leg up. A high two, 29, but a doji bar plus a tail, 28. So it's not looking all that strong. This might be a wedge rally, three legs up, 20, 26, and it was. And when we reached the target, the measured move from the low of the day to the low of last week, and we got to the start of the collapse here, and we got to that buy single bar 13 or 15. So possible swing down 32. Well, 32 is interesting. It was a 10 bar full micro channel that reduces the chances of the market going straight down. Usually the market will need at least a micro bubble top before it goes down. So it's a wedge 20, 26, 32. Some bears sold 32, others waited for a micro double top 34, and then sold below 35. And we bounced on 38, we bounced on 42, and we still have a gap um, below um, 34, so possible double top bear flag. The bulls wanted 40 to be a wedge bull flag, three legs down, one or one, and then two, three, but a bear body. And 41, a good bull bar, but closed just below the moving average, not above it, so you'll get some bear selling close, hoping for the double top 39, which the bear's got. Not a good sell signal bar, 42, but a surprise bar down 43, so probably going at least a little bit lower. Bulls tried to reverse up 46, but two bear bars, tight bear channel, should be going lower. Outside down 47, I O I 48, but big tail on top, nobody wants to buy above. So at this point, we're in a small pullback bear trend. <clears throat> so traders will sell for any reason. They'll sell above things, below things, bull closes, bear closes. They'll just sell. I don't think this is going to lead to a huge bear trend like yesterday because we've already had two big rallies today, big gap up and here. But And I also think open low of last week is exactly the midpoint of this low that high. So I think... However down we go, we're going to come back to last week's low. So I don't think this is going to go on forever. However, it's a small pullback bear trend. Big bear bar 48, 49, follows from 50, a tail, those are 51. Um, we're around last, we were around yesterday's low and we're around the 23 low. Again, I don't think we're going a lot lower. Bulls reversal up 53, um, but a really tight Bear channel, and it's only a small bull doji. A lot of the bulls will want a second buy. 
56 IOI. It's actually IIOI, um, but it's a bear bar. However, the context is really good. The second reversal from above, from below yesterday's low, and we had two earlier strong buys, and we know we're going to get back to the low of last week. So you could buy above 56 or above 55. Outside down 54, outside up 55. So it's an OO buy signal. And we triggered the buy on 57. 58, the bears wanted a low one short. You can call it a small wedge rally. 53, 55, a small double top. 51, 57. Bear bar closing on its low, good for the bears. But I said that if you get out, you know, you can get out, but I, I think it's okay to hold and take a chance that we're going to have a small pullback, pullback bull trend up to uh, last week's low, which is what we did. Bull breakout, 60, 61, but tail. Another possible wedge, 55, 57, and 61. A decent sell signal bar, but two things. It's a tight bull channel, and I think we just went always in one. Three things, and I think we're going to get to last week's low. So I'm not going to sell below 62. <clears throat> Bulls, bull bar closing on its high, 67. Should go higher, but does not look all that strongly bullish. And then for the bears, we have um, 69, uh, micro double top, 68, double top with um, 43, lower high double top. Wedge, one, two, three, but six bull bars, probably a minor reversal. Sold off for a few bars. The bulls got 70. Three, micro double bottom, 72, higher low double bottom, 63, and they got a little bounce into the um, close, back above last week's low, and you can see where we are right now. The market has been paying a lot of attention to the low of last week for the past five hours, and it looks like we'll close just a little bit above, a little bit below. For stock entry traders today, as I said, I would not buy above two, I would not buy above six, or six, we've had three. Bear bars were far above the moving average, and for the bears, I would not sell below three. So the first stop entry trade was selling below eight. Selling below 11, not great, two bull bars, and, and then a low one below 16, not great. I think we're in a tight bear channel, and we might go lower. It looks like we're going down to last week's low, so we could sell below 16. Um, and then below, uh, buying above 19, I would not. Buying about 20 is okay, but you probably need a wide stop because we it's the first reversal up, so we may drop below 20. Um, selling below 21, I think we're not going much lower. 20 is really dramatic, and I think we're, we're going to get a reversal up. Um, you can buy about 23, higher probability about 24 or 25. High one, 27. Um, bear bar, I don't know. I'd rather take the high two, 29, but even that is not good. For the bears, it's a short below 32. Bulls get out of longs for sure. Bears, not a great short. Slightly higher probability below 37. I would not buy above 38. Not a great sell, 39. The bulls are trying to get a double bottom with um, 27. They're hoping that we get a bull flag and another leg up. <clears throat> bears, um, so I would not buy above 40. I would not buy above 41. Right at the moving average possible double top. And 42 is a double top bear flag, 39, um, but not a great looking sell. Uh, if you set taking it, you're swing trading. 43, the surprise bar down, um, not a great looking sell below 44, 45. You know, 48, IOI, maybe we'll get down to the low of the day, but this looks like it's going to be uh, a bear leg in a trading range. So I think we're going to get a reversal. 53, I think you only buy it if you're willing to use a wide stop. And then I'd buy about either 56 or 55. I would not sell 58. 59, we're probably going up to last week's low, so it's a high one. 63, a high one, but two bear bars, not great. 62, it's a wedge, but I thought we did not get close enough to last week's low, so we're going to go higher. Limit order traders. Uh, on the open, there's a limit order open for the first hour or so. Probably buyers below three, but we're far above the moving average in a big bear, big tail, bear body one. Um, I would not be taking that buy. First limit order trade that is reasonable. There really were not many that uh, somebody can trade with a small account. 
you know, maybe Saul about 33, really not all that good. Saul about 38 or Scout, um, maybe buy below 39. And sell about 46. You know, not a great buy below 58, but I think we're going higher. Same with 62. And, and then um, beyond that, um, selling prior highs, buying prior lows. I thought there'd be buyers below 20. The sell climax is extreme, and we've had a series of sell climax. And um, I think we're probably paying attention to last week's low. So. Probably buyers below 20, but you need a wide stop, maybe more than a measure move based upon that, the height of that bar, so somewhere down here. And what about selling the 20 high? That's the neckline of a double bottom, so I would not sell it. I think we're going to bounce, so I would not sell that. What about selling low 28? Well, I think we're going up to 16, so I don't want to sell 28. And on the way down, what about buying um, 29, 27? I would not. This is strong enough down to make me think we may go at least a little bit lower. So really not great limit order trades, buying 40 low. Uh, we might be in a small, that's the neckline of a double top, so I don't want to buy that. And then here, it's a small pullback bear trend. And when the market's in a small pullback bear trend, I don't like to buy. Well, this is, it looks like it's becoming a small pullback bear trend. So what happens next week? Well, we're outside down. We closed just above last week's low. So good for the, good for the bulls to keep it from closing below last week's low. Um, we have a big tail on the daily chart. So, and this is the first four day pullback. So I suspect Monday will not be a fifth day. So I think Monday's low will be above today's low. So Monday could be an inside day, for example. And the market has to decide. Is this the start of a move down to this area, or is it a pullback, and we then go higher? And we'll get the information next week. The end of the month, I think June 26th through July 5th or so, is one of the most reliably bullish times of the year. So um, that's two weeks from now. So it's possible that we go down for a couple of weeks. I don't know if we'll get to 2,700 in two weeks. I think that's too low. But let's say we come down here and then bounce into early July but form a lower high. That could get us down to the 2700 area. Okay, question. I know on the open you are more resistant to taking limit order trades. Is there a specific time after which you become more open to limit order trading? Yeah, the, the most uh, obvious time to me is on days when I'm not in the chat room because if I'm using a limit order and I'm buying below things, I'm buying as the market's falling. I'm doing the opposite of what the market's doing. And if I'm selling as the market's going up, I'm doing the opposite of what the market's doing. And I have to make really quick decisions and I have to um, pay a lot of attention to what I'm doing. And if I'm talking in the chat room, I feel like I cannot – devote enough attention to taking limit order trades. <clears throat> also, in general, I know that 90% of days have a good stop entry trade sometime in the opening range, first hour, first hour and a half, first two hours. And it's a swing setup. So I'd rather um, concentrate on looking for that stop order trade. And if I don't take it initially and I see the market going a certain way, like down today, it makes me look to get short because the trade is probably going to last at least an hour and sometimes it'll last a few hours. So on the open, I really prefer to look for stop order trades because 90% of days have at least one stop order trade on the open that leads to a swing trade. And swing trades are just easier, you know, I prefer just to buy and let it go for a couple of legs uh, or sell, let it go for a couple of legs. You know, on a day like today, you know, the, the swing trades are very big. They're 10 to 20 points. If you're um, willing to hold through things, you can make a lot more. You know, this rally was 50 points. This rally was 40 points. So I'd, I'd rather try to catch it. Plus, it's fun doing a variety of things. It's fun to scalp and swing. 
And it's, I think it's especially fun to swing trade off the open. So um, those th 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 that's why I prefer um, not looking for a lot of limit order trades on the open. But I, I do take them. I'm more willing to take them on days when I'm not talking in the chat room. Al, what is your experience with drawdowns and how do you deal with them? Do I ever get more than a 1% drawdown? I don't get them. That's, that's, that's just the truth. I just don't. If, if you lose uh, one point on a trade, is that a drawdown? If you lose five points on a trade, is that a drawdown? To me, that's just ordinary days trading. So in my mind, you know, my definition of a drawdown is something significant, 5 or 10 or 20%. I haven't had that in years and years and years. So um, my way of dealing with them is I don't get them. So and part of it is, you know, I have a bunch of accounts. I have a bunch of different brokers. You know, I have the luxury of not needing to trade huge. So I never risk all that much. You know, usually on any one account, um, I'm usually not risking more than 3%. And if you add up all my accounts uh, on any one trade, I'm probably risking a big trade. I probably would risk 1%. And because of that, I don't get um, drawdowns, you know, you know, so, you know, maybe I come down and drop 1%. You know, I don't know if I've ever dropped 2% in, in a long, long time, years, but well, I might have. So my way of dealing with them is I don't get them. In a way, I don't like answering that way because I'm in a different position from where I was 35 years ago. And 35 years ago, um, I did get drawdowns. You know, was not trading as big accounts. Plus, I did a lot of dumb things. For 10 years, I did a whole bunch of dumb things, and um, I just lost and lost and lost and lost. So, um, so I did. I did get drawdowns, but now, you know, I, I trade, and I don't care size. As I said, I have a whole bunch of accounts. So if I lose, I don't care. I don't care. You know, I just take the next trade. I'm confident that as long as I do what is reasonable and manage the trade reasonably well, you know, I'm going to make money. You know, if I lose, even if I lose two or three times in a row, I don't care. I know that it's going to work out. I'm going to be fine. I don't look back and say, oh, gosh, I lost two trades in a row or you know, you lost three trades in a row. You know, I don't, I don't do that. I just, I just keep moving forward. Um, and, uh, I never lose enough so that it interferes with my ability to trade. That's different from 30 years ago. Sometimes I'd lose five trades in a row, 10 trades in a row, five days in a row, 10 days in a row. And it was really upsetting. It was hard to um, get back in there and trade again. Uh, but now, yeah, you know, that's not where I am. I, I trade. I, I don't care size. So no matter what happens, I'm never going to lose uh, all that much. And that's, I think, one of the goals that every trader should have: try to build their account to the point that they don't have to worry about losses. They can just look ahead at the next trade and patiently wait for the next setup, and be confident that you know sometimes you'll lose money, but if you Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Those losses will, you'll quickly make back those losses and you'll get ahead. So, um, and I know you say, Al, if I only have a $5,000 account, how can that possibly be? Well, it takes, it takes a long time to get to where you need to be. And if you have a $5,000 account, I would trade, you know, one micro e mini and, um, be careful about my selection, my orders. And I would look for swing trades. You know, now a swing trade is 10 or 20 points, but on most days it's four or five or points, 10 points. And just try to make 1% a day. So if you have a $5,000 account, you just try to make $50 a day. And you just try to do that regularly. And at the end of a year, you will not have a $5,000 account. You'll have a $10,000 account. And if you do it for a couple of years and you just work on discipline, you'll have a $20,000 account. And then all of a sudden, instead of trading, um, micro e minis and one and two and three contracts, you might start trading regular size e minis. So the goal early on is not to make a living. The goal early on is to learn how to trade consistently and profitably 
And the best way to do it is trade with a very small position size. Not worry that you're not making a living. You're not going to make a living right away. What you want to do is get consistently profitable and get consistently comfortable and slowly grow your account. And after a year or two or three of doing that, you'll start to realize that your account's big enough so that you can start trading bigger. So instead of micro e minis or instead of really small forex positions, you can trade bigger positions. And at some point, you'll start to say, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm making enough money to, to make a living. And then two or three years later, you'll say, no, oh, I'm making really good money. But it just takes it just takes time. But the starting point is not caring, not not thinking about money, just thinking about being good, just doing the right thing. A question on days when you're not in the trading, it gets quiet in the final hour. Do you always wait until one o'clock, or do you just call it a day? Uh, are there days when you don't trade at all? I'm pretty much here all the time, and. On days when I'm not in the trading room, I'm still here. Excuse me, I'm not in the chat room. I'm still here trading pretty much all day long. And if it's quiet, you know, maybe I'll, you know, who knows, you know, go to start uh, preparing something for dinner tonight. But, you know, for the most part, I'm here all, all the time, even, even on days when I'm not in the chat room. I like to trade and it's fun. To me, it's like fishing. I like to fly fish. I like the hunt. I like the excitement. And trading is the same way. So you just never know what the bar to the right will do. And But you have an idea. I mean, I'm fly fishing. I'm looking for where the fish might be. With experience, you learn how to read the water. And you try to figure out where the fish are holding. And that's where you want to fish. You just don't go to a stream and to start casting anywhere, you try to figure out what kinds of parts of the river. There are all kinds of variety to the water, and you just try to figure out where the fish are, and then um, you tend to work that. So to me, that's fun, and it's fun to try to structure the trades. So back to your question, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much here all the time, and even when it's really quiet, I'm pretty much here. I might be working on a blog or working on a lecture or a webinar or something, but I'm always doing something and I always am watching the market, even if I go a couple hours without placing a trade. Okay, hope everybody has a good weekend.